Hey there, friends and family, and welcome to today's video. Welcome back to the Sunday Wrestling Series. Uh, I'm actually recording this on Sunday this week. Normally, I'm uh, recording at least a couple of days in advance, but this week has been busy. I hadn't had a chance to record ahead of time, so uh, just got in from church, and now I'm recording a video that you'll see uh, later today as I'm sitting here recording. So, um decided to pick up this 2021 Topps WWE box recently uh, from Cajun Breaker uh, when I went to visit the store, like I say, recently. I don't remember exactly when, a few weeks ago. Um, so I think I tried to look it up. Uh, or I mean, I looked on the box, I should say. I think this has two autographs per box in it. Um, obviously, it's a few years old, 2021 product. Uh, so we'll open that, but first I'm going to open two more of the Mystery Grail WWE Edition boxes. Uh, so I'm going to set the Topps box aside for a second, and we're going to open up two more of these Mystery Grail boxes. So uh, Mystery Grail releases um, a new Mystery Box run each Sunday, um, and usually they're $15 per box plus $4 shipping per box. Uh, and they usually have some sort of theme. Uh, and so a few weeks ago before WrestleMania, they had a WWE theme. Uh, and so I ordered 10 of these boxes. I've opened some of them here on the channel, opened some on, uh, TikTok and we're open two more today. I still have some in the box from Mystery Grail. Um, and I think the current release this week is like a Marvel, like triple pack. So it's like one Funko, one graded comic and like a graded Marvel card or something like that. I don't know exactly. I didn't order any of those. Not super interested in Marvel collectibles. I like the movies, but, um, I don't collect the collectibles, uh, stick to sports cards, Pokemon and WWE stuff. So anyways, we're going to open up two of these boxes. I've already got this one ripped open. So we're going to check it out inside the box. Like I said, is one Funko pop. Um, and these are WWE themed. Plus there'll be, um, some little pieces of candy and a scratch off card for like bonus points on their website. And if you add up all of the points, then you can get, um, like some special, pops that they have in exchange for big amounts of points or t-shirts, things like that. Our first pop, as you can see on the screen, is John Cena, number 136. Very nice. Made his surprise return appearance at WrestleMania. Very nice. And I did realize, if you're a fan of the channel uh, and follow this Sunday Wrestling series, then you'll know that last week, last week's episode of Sunday Wrestling on WrestleMania Sunday was an AEW box. Um, I didn't realize it when I was recording, but as I was editing and uploading, I realized that it was going to go public on WrestleMania Sunday and thought about recording something else, but uh, I did want the message about Bray Wyatt's documentary um, that I had recorded in that video um, to get out there as soon as possible for people to um, go and check out that documentary. And there's two pieces of candy and there's our scratch card. I'll scratch that. Um, and so I decided to just stick with the video that I had recorded and we could talk about WrestleMania this week while I open up some other things. We got 200 bonus points from mysterygirl.com on that card. And like I say, the John Cena pop. Um, so I thought overall WrestleMania was a great show. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, I thought, were very good. Sunday was better. Um, I think that's a fairly universal opinion. Um, I think the only match that I was sort of disappointed in, again, is the common opinion, the Uso match. Just, I mean... Because they've been part of the Bloodline story for so long, um, I think everybody expected the conclusion of the brother versus brother rivalry to just absolutely blow it out of the water. And it was just kind of an okay match, especially for WrestleMania. It was like, it, it felt like that match could have been on something more like Fastlane or payback or you know one of one of the lesser pay-per-views or premium live events um instead of wrestlemania 
Uh, obviously, those two guys are super talented. Appreciate what they do in the ring, but that match just didn't quite do it. Uh, in box number two, we've got a Riddle Pop, number 115. Probably not worth the $15 that we paid, or 19 with shipping, but, uh, you know, a nice looking pop nonetheless. We've got a couple of pieces of candy here, and one more card that I'm going to pull out. I'm going to fold this box back up and toss it to the side, and uh, we'll see what we've got on the scratch card. It's going to be 200 more points. So like I say, those add up over time. And um, you cash them in on the website, and then certain, like, uh, rare or hit Grail Funko Pops cost, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, twelve to 15,000 points. Uh, and, so, and you can pull 1,000-point cards out of these um, to help you get there faster. But usually you pull uh, 200 points at a time, and then they add up, and you can cash in those points for uh, rarer pops. So check that out on mysterygrail.com. I do appreciate um, their company and what they do. Um, I'm, I'm not really a Funko collector, um, but there's definitely a market there on eBay and in the collecting market in general. And I like the way that they do it. They have pretty transparent pricing. Uh, basically, like I said, basically all of their runs um, for just the one Funko box is $15 plus $4 shipping. And then if there's something else in the run of graded cards or comics or whatever, then there's, you know, increases in the cost for those types of things. But if it's just a Funko mystery box from mysterygrill.com, it's almost always going to be $15 per box plus shipping. And, uh, and they advertise what the top hits and the runs are ahead of time. Um, and then it's just fair game once they go live. They're live until they sell out. So uh, I appreciate that approach to things. And um, I've been a customer of theirs for over a year now, taking part in different runs and things like that. You've seen a variety of their products here on the channel. So let's get into this um, Tops 2021 box. As you can see there, it does finally tell you once you open it, two hits per box and one autograph guaranteed. And they can be redemptions. Hopefully we won't find any of those. They would be expired by now in 2024 since this is a 2021 product. Um, they would have expired last year most likely. Although Tops is usually pretty good at still fulfilling those redemptions. Here I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit now that we have all of the big boxes out of the way. Um, Tops is usually pretty good at fulfilling expired redemptions if they have them. But we'll see. And we'll probably open up more than one pack at a time, but just so that you have an idea of what these cards look like. It's a lot of like moment cards and not a ton of roster cards. But so you see Edge makes his surprise return. Eva Marie roster card. The Usos return to help Roman Reigns. Coolest mixed tag teams. Seth and Becky. Elias defeating King Corbin, Dexter Loomis roster card, and then Jeff Hardy defeating Sheamus. Uh, so that's what a pack looks like. A couple of roster cards, a couple of base, like, moment cards, and, uh, and then an insert, or maybe two. So we'll, I'll open up a few of these packs, and uh, we'll get into it. What did you think of WrestleMania? Let me know in the comments um, which match was your favorite. Um, I would, like I say, I was, I was happy with the event overall. I thought it was fantastic storytelling. Um, I thought the production elements were super, uh, interesting. I'm, you know, obviously you hear the stories of the people in the stands and having lights shine in their face and the video monitors going out. And I mean, it's a football stadium that's being transformed into essentially a TV studio with a live audience. I mean, there's going to be technical glitches, um, but I thought the at-home product was fantastic. Like I say, I thought the storytelling was awesome. I'm pretty sure I'd have to go back and look at the match card, but I think everybody that I wanted to win won. 
Um, that may be a controversial take with Logan Paul, um, but I, I just didn't feel like either one of his opponents would really benefit from a title run right now and from beating Logan Paul. Um, and so I thought it made the most sense to have him retain and just see what happens, especially as he really does seem to be committed to staying with WWE and being a, a fixture in the roster for at least the foreseeable future. future. And so uh, I think that was the right decision. It was time for Gunther to lose the title. Um, it was time for Roman to lose the title. It was not time for Rhea to lose the title. Um, and so, you know, and I've talked about specifically those three in the past as we lose some minis from our Ginter box a couple of weeks ago that I still haven't cleaned up or uh, organized. We'll get those put back away and one of, like I say like I've said before one of these days I'll get around to cleaning up this mess of a break table and getting things organized and labeled and put away and sold on eBay and things like that but anyways I talked about it in a video a few weeks ago about how WWE was basically doing the same storyline with three of their superstars with Gunther having the world's uh, longest intercontinental championship reign Rhea having the longest women's championship ring and and Roman, you know, setting all kinds of records with his title reign. It was it was kind of getting repetitive that they have, you know, and you know, I understand, you know, you want your champions to look like champions. And um that is an easy way uh and probably un um not necessarily unusual, but out of the norm, I guess, for WWE, way for them to do that um, lately. Tony Storm foil board, those are not numbered. There's like one in every other pack or something like that. Um, and so Triple H, after taking over creative, wanted to, you know, it's crazy to see some of these guys. T-Bar, um, I mean, obviously, he's still with the company, but to have a rookie card as T-Bar is interesting. Um, new champion there, Damian Priest. Um, to have your uh, champions look strong by just never being beaten is an easy way to establish them as dominant. Um, and so Triple H doing that is understandable. It, it, it just was unfortunate to me um, that he was doing that they were doing it with three people all at the same time um, it 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 kind of lessened the effect of it to me uh, obviously you were pushing Roman as the top guy but then you were also trying to tell the same story with Gunther and Imperium without calling it the same story but it was it was the same story. Um, and then Rhea being the de facto leader of the Judgment Day was the same story again. Um, and so it was getting old. I'm glad that some of that has worn off now. Rhea can really have her time to shine as the dominant champion in the company right now. Um, and like I say, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Uh, I'm glad Bailey is finally getting some more flowers uh, after she carried the company through the pandemic uh, on the women's side and um so anyways overall i thought it was a really nice show i was very happy with it um i don't know that i could necessarily pick a favorite match even though i've asked you to in the comments um there was there was a lot of really good storytelling. I guess I guess if I were going to pick a favorite match, uh, I might pick the six-pack challenge. I love tag team wrestling. Um, anything that R-Truth is involved in, we'll go ahead and take out this damaged, bent AJ Styles card. Don't even need to sort through that. Um, to... Um, our truth is a great storyteller, great comedy act. It's good to see him win another championship. Um, and t 
to be somewhat back on top of WWE after having a rough year last year uh, with the injury and things. Um, so, anyways, overall, I thought WrestleMania was very good this year. Happy to have spent the time to watch it. I still haven't taken the time to watch the Hall of Fame. Uh, I do want to do that. I might do that this afternoon, like while the video goes live. Um, obviously, I want to hear from Paul. The others, some of that will be interesting. Others I'll probably fast forward through, to be honest. Uh, but I definitely want to hear Heyman's speech. So, And then I also haven't watched SmackDown yet. I watched uh, the Raw after Mania Live. I was kind of disappointed in that. It seems like this is the second year, basically, that Triple H has kind of been heavily involved in that Raw after Mania. Um, and I feel like he's kind of downplaying it. I mean, we got the announcement that Sheamus is coming back. Um, but it wasn't all of all that impressive to me for it, it being a Raw after Mania and them advertising it as the Raw after Mania. Um, I wasn't blown away with anything that happened. Um, I hear that SmackDown was a little bit better. I hear NXT was a little bit better uh, this past week. So I'll definitely check out SmackDown. I might try and find the time to watch NXT as well. I don't, I don't typically watch NXT from week to week. I watch some of the um, PLEs or pay-per-views or specials or whatever they call them. Um, and I record all the episodes of YouTube TV, so I get unlimited DVR through that. So I record all of them. Uh, so if I hear about something, I can go back and watch it. But I don't typically watch them all. We do have a relic, it looks like, back here. So we'll get to that soon. Hopefully we find our auto as well. Let's get into the second half. We're going to start off with Tommaso Ciampa. Raquel Gonzalez, rookie card. Um, anyway, so yeah, let me know what you thought of WrestleMania and WrestleMania Week. In the comments, like I say, I was I was very happy with WrestleMania for sure. A little bit disappointed with Raw, and I haven't watched the other shows yet. So we'll have to see about that. It's interesting to see the... Oh, we've got an Asuka auto. Numbered to 150. Very nice. You want the women in these products. They have the higher resale value if you're not going to get one of the top guys. Um... The women do better. So that looks like it's 59 out of 150, I think. She wrote, wrote, wrote right over the second digit, but I'm pretty sure it's 59 of 150. Um, nice auto of Asuka. I don't think I've ever pulled an Asuka autograph before. I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember. Um, I might have pulled one. I'll be real embarrassed if I pulled one here on the channel and just don't remember it. I've got a numbered card of Jeff Hardy. 38 of 99, green, Jeff Hardy furiously attacks Sheamus. Green parallel to 99. And let's check out what's left. And we'll send you off to the rest of your Sunday. I do appreciate you checking out this video, listening to me ramble a little bit about WrestleMania. Uh, remember to leave a like on the video. And subscribe so you don't miss any more wrestling content or other content. If you didn't know, for, or if you're new around here, I post at least three videos a week here on YouTube. Sundays are always a wrestling video. And then Mondays and Fridays for other like hobby boxes things. That's why this table is such a mess. We got Archive Signature Series there, Allen and Ginter there. Um, the top of that stack back there is the AEW box from last week. And below that looks like maybe some Don Russ NASCAR or Elite Extra Edition is below that. Um, and then over here, you can just barely see in the frame, is a lot of Top Series 1 from this year, 2024. Um, I have a personal case of hanger boxes of Series 1. Uh, and so I've been opening those both here on the channel and on TikTok. I post a video every day on TikTok. Uh, just usually a little retail rip, something like that. Maybe a couple of packs of a hobby box, something like that, uh, every day over there on TikTok. So check me out over there. It's the same username as here on YouTube. It's at Greg Zeker. Oh, and I'm almost tilting over the camera. 
There's King Corbin's court stands tall over the bloodline. I don't really remember them being in a stable together. On paper, that seems like it should be a stable that should have worked, but obviously it didn't. Got a card. It was They were together long enough to get a card, but I don't remember that. We've got another numbered card. So this is a, I guess a dark green, something like that, numbered to 199. 157 of 199 on the British Bulldog. So 99 on Jeff Hardy, 199 on the British Bulldog. They're different. They're definitely different color greens, I think. Um, or maybe it's the difference is just roster card versus base card. I don't know. Uh, but a couple of numbered cards there. And we've got our relic. Oh, and it's a nice one. Low numbered to 50. Orange parallel of Kevin Owens, Matt Relic. Is this going to be a WrestleMania match? Authentic Matt Relic, 27 of 50. Let's see if it tells us. Yeah, an authentic WrestleMania 34 used Matt Relic of Kevin Owens. Very nice. WrestleMania Matt Relic, orange parallel to 50. Very nice. Then we've got Shotzi, Cesaro, Drew McIntyre, Montez Ford, Edge, Becky Lynch, and John Cena to close out the box. So a fun rip. Uh, something a little bit different from all of the super modern Panini stuff that I've been opening lately. Um, next week will almost certainly be another one or two of those AEW uh, Spectrum boxes. I do have a case of those, so I want to... Continue to open through them and get some of them listed on eBay. Some more of them listed on eBay. I've already made some sales um, to recoup some of that money from that case. Um, but overall, very happy with this box. Uh, the Shotzi, um, Shotzi, the Asuka autograph. Shotzi's on top of the stack back there. Uh, Asuka autograph is a nice one. The British Bulldog and Jeff Hardy parallels. And then the Kevin Owens WrestleMania Matt Relic orange parallel numbered to 50 is uh, our four hit cards out of that one. So I do appreciate you checking this one out. Remember to leave a like and subscribe. Go and check out my TikTok if you're on that platform. And I'll see you tomorrow for another full-length video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.